how to paint an easy card in watercolor that anybody can do. Hi, I'm Deb Watson. I'm starting with a piece of scrap paper and I'm mixing up a wash of light blue. Next, I wet my little piece of scrap paper. You can soak it in water or wet it with a brush or sponge. And then you drop some of the blue into it. You can already see it's awfully watery, so I add more color and keep going. Should I leave a spot for snow at the bottom? No, let's not worry about detail yet. Just get a nice wet wash with some blue on there. Next, I'm taking a razor blade. This one's a little bit rusty, and you have to be very careful with razors, but you can use any flat object that's nice and stiff, like a credit card cut in half or palette knife. I place it flat against the wet wash and pull it over as hard as I can to scrape the water and paint out of the paper. You can see it's not working very well, I'm not sure if it's because of the scrap paper, but I'm going to show you from another video. It's just a little insert, and I'll put the link to the video in the information below what it's supposed to look like. In this video, I was going to demonstrate the same thing in different colors but I ended up getting carried away and doing a whole painting. You can see I threw the color on there nice and wet and thick and juicy. And then I'm using my razor here and it's scraping out some nice white areas for the birch trees. And I'm making my trees different shapes and sizes. I'm making them different lengths apart Here's a credit card cut in half. You don't want to make three trees all in a row like a fence post. And if you have good paper and you have had a little practice, this is what it will look like. But if yours doesn't turn out white, don't keep scraping it. Just keep going with the lesson. It'll be fine. And you can also use the tip to scratch in or out some branches while it's still wet. Just kind of push the tip down and draw it across. And now I have a whole forest. Okay, now you can really see the difference. This, this paint could be a lot thicker, but it'll still turn out really nice. Whatever you have, just work with it. You can see I'm not getting much of an effect. So I'm gonna come back with paint and fill it in. I'm gonna put three trees on the card See if I can scratch anything in. No, it's too dry. Okay, now I'm switching to my brown. This is Burnt Sienna. And you can paint the color onto your razor or just dab your razor in the color on your palette. And once again, you put the razor at the side of the tree and pull it across. And it gives the paint a look like birch trees. And you can do this burnt sienna, um, a light blue like cobalt blue, or if you do ultramarine, use it watery. And you can kind of see the mottled effect you get, which is very tree-like. Now I'm mixing some darker blue with my burnt sienna to make almost a black. And I'll do a few little areas of that. You can use your brush to do some little limbs, but it can be difficult to get a thin limb unless you have a nice rigor brush. So if you want a nice thin limb, you can also use whatever you're using to scrape out your trees. And just dip it in and use the edge and you'll get a terrific thin little branches. So I'm getting some nice variety. Next, I'm taking my opaque white. I use Pro White by De La Roni from a jar, and I don't keep it on my palette. I'm 
That's a little bit globby. I take off most of the excess with a paper towel. And then I use just a damp brush to reactivate that and pull it back off. I'm going to fill back in with some of the blue. And at this point, I'm just going to let that dry. So you can also use your brush to add some white. But that's more for like clumps of white and not for the ragged tree looking white. Here I'm using red to add a hint of a cardinal. Then I'm just using an ink pen once that dried to give it a sharp beak, an outline, and a little tail. I mix some thin white in the lid and I'm tapping the brush on my finger and spatter on some falling snow. I'm also putting some snow at the bottom. Now, white has a tendency to fade out. So you put it on and it looks good, and then as it dries, it kind of disappears. Here, now that this is dry, I'm putting a little more blue up there. And you can use a pencil or a brush to outline a bit. These are a special kind of scissors that give the paper a nice ragged edge. It's called a deckled edge. I don't want to lose much of this paper, but I'd like the edges to look nice because I'm going to be gluing it onto the front of a card. And my white has all faded out. I put it back on with thicker paint and soften the edge at the bottom with a damp brush. And that's about it. I added dark blue around the edge. I think it really gives it a nice finished look. Here's a student painting, and you notice the background doesn't have to be blue. It can be any color you like. On my website, you'll find this happy snowman and the 10 free lessons, this pine cone, and at the intermediate level, you'll find garden friends. You don't have to do any drawing for my online lessons, and you don't have to do my version. You can do it any way you like. In these lessons, you'll learn how to use different techniques and materials to create some simple but effective watercolor paintings. Silhouettes are always fun. I designed the lessons to be easy to follow and turn out well. So check out debwatson.org and sign up today so you can start painting right now. Thank you.